Hi all. We've now come to the part of the course that uh, will now test you to see how you're doing in regards to your understanding of everything we have covered so far uh, throughout the first uh, several weeks of this course. Um, part of syllabus, this is project one. Uh, the, please go reference the syllabus in regards to how much this project is actually worth. It's actually worth a pretty substantial piece of your final grade. Uh, so we want you to do well on it, uh, number one. Number two, make sure you understand that this is a test. Do your own work. Uh, we as instructors are not that stupid. We actually know when you don't do your own work. Um, and so do your own work, uh, okay? Uh, we're not here to, uh, we're here to make sure you're successful. And, and so by testing you uh, and allowing you this opportunity to see where you are, we can then, you know, if, if we feel you're not where you need to be, we can come to you and, and help you, okay? If you let other people help you or do the work for you, um, that's not doing anybody any good. And as the program chair of this uh, um, particular uh, program, as computer programming database management, uh, I have seen too often that people try to sneak by during these early courses, but by the time they get ready for co-op or ready to graduate or ready for capstone, they're not ready. Uh, so that, that doesn't do anybody any good, okay? Once again, I don't want you worrying too much about the grades. I want you worried about the learning. That's what you should be learning, uh, worried about right now. As long as you're learning, the grades will take care of themselves, okay? Uh, but uh, everybody's going to have a different, um, what do you want to say, uh, style, not style, I, I, a different pace, I should say, in regards to picking all of this up. All right, so don't worry about it. Just stay focused and determined to learn what you need to learn. With that said, uh, everything up to this point in regards to your assignments, you know, are really there for you to practice, okay? And the feedback that you receive from your instructors and also through the solutions and the videos should supply you with if you're understanding this or not. So I hope you're taking advantage of all of that uh, and making sure you are gaining understanding. Just don't hand stuff in and just hope for the best. Hand stuff in and review all the things that we provided for you in this course to ensure that you are learning and doing the way that we want you to do it. There is a method to our madness uh, in regards to uh, our approaches to this, okay? Anyway, with all that said, let's go ahead and get started with the, the Programming 2 project. I wanted to review this with you versus just kind of give you a document and hope you understood. Uh, this particular pr uh, project, you're going to be doing uh, a Census Bureau, okay? And you're going to write an application for a Census Bureau. So you can kind of think of there's people who are going to be making calls to people and asking questions of them, okay? Not too many questions, but by primarily what they're going to be asking is, where do you live? Okay, so let's just kind of pretend we're doing this for the tri-state area. I don't have any, anything in here for Indiana, so I'm, I apologize to my Indiana students uh, when I say tri-state. I didn't put those in there, but I just put a couple counties and a couple uh, and a couple states in here to kind of keep it relatively simple. All right, and so what we should have on our input, uh, I'm sorry, on our design, on our form, should be a combo box. Okay. That's required. Uh, that should have Hamilton, comma, Ohio, Butler, comma, Ohio, and so on. And then there should be a text box that's required, must be numeric, and must be greater than zero, that says what the uh, household yearly income is. And then finally, the number in the household. Once again, required, must be numeric, must be greater than zero. These pieces right here, as you see, basically tell you how to validate. So ensure that you're doing your validation correctly uh, and in a proper modulized type of, of way that we have taught you in programming one and also now programming two. All right. So really three pieces of data on your form, not too much uh, in that regard. OK, this, so this must be one combo box, one combo box. OK. So what's going to happen is, is that the people are going to collect this, meaning whoever's working for the census will call up people and say, hey, Bob, where do you live? And I said, well, I live in Boone, Kentucky. Got it. Uh, what's your household yearly income? Well, I don't know, $5 million. I, don't, I wish it was anyway, uh, but it's not quite that. So, and how many is in your household? Well, all my kids are gone, so this is my wife and I and a couple dogs, so we'll say two. Uh, and so they will enter that in, press submit. The goal is to collect all this information and we're going to analyze this information uh, and so on, you know, uh, for whomever is hiring us to write this application. All right. Um, so the 
output, there should be four buttons on your screen. There should be a submit button, okay, that will validate everything and add them to, yes, the arrays for processing. You're going to create arrays for this. It should be parallel arrays, all right? Remember what parallel arrays are, a structure where every a part, each array represents, it's related to the other part of the array. So almost we're putting records into these arrays, okay? Uh, you're not processing anything as you collect the data. You're just collecting the data. Does that make sense? That's all you should be doing is collecting the data on the submit button, validating it and putting it into the arrays. All right, no processing. I cannot stress that enough. If I see processing in your solutions, I will take off uh, on, your, on your grades here, okay? Uh, exit, okay, and then there should be these pieces right here. This is going to be our output. So what you're going to do is you're going to have an event that will process the arrays and display the total household surveyed by county in a list box, okay? You can have three list boxes here. You can have one list box if you want to do it differently and neatly and so on, or you could have a list box for each one of these. It makes no difference to me how you do that uh, in this regard, okay? But if I press a button for total household survey, it should pop up and kind of look something like this, that in Ohio, I have a total of four. Two came from Butler, uh, Hamilton County, and I had this kind of messed up, but then, and then two would come from Butler County, okay? Uh, is that what I'm doing? Butler and, yeah, Butler and Hamilton. Again, I apologize to Claremont. Um, and so in Kentucky, uh, I only have one so far and one in Boone, okay? And then none in Kenton County, and I apologize to Campbell County for anybody who lives there. I'm not forgetting you. I'm just trying to keep this a little more simple. If I added more and more counties, uh, you'll be adding up things for forever, okay? And so this is what should pop up. And obviously, it should be dynamic. I, I should be able to add more and more to my arrays as I go, all right? Does that make sense? Uh, and so in doing so, then I can, these numbers would change every time I clicked on that, on that uh, button. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, four different arrays for each one of these, okay? Uh, then you're going to have one for average household income. And that will look something like this. Okay, again, you'll have one for the overall state, and then you'll have one for each individual piece uh, in the county. So if you collected 20 things from Butler County, this should be the average of those 20. If I collected a total of 50 uh, different uh, census uh, from, for Ohio, this should be the average of the entire 50, the part of, on Ohio. Understand? The final piece is poverty. This part's a little bit tricky, so my recommendation is get the first two done. Uh, there's a lot of repetition here uh, as you're going to be looping through your arrays and processing. But get the first two done. What we're going to be looking for is the percentage of households in poverty. Okay. Now, I am not doing this based upon any knowledge of what poverty is. So if uh, you know and you think this is wrong, um, I, how can I say it? That's okay. This is just for an example. Okay. And so poverty is going to be based on if a person has two or three in a household with less than $10,000 in income, they would be considered poverty. Or four or five, less than $25,000, and greater than five, uh, with greater than five in the household with income of less than $35,000, okay? I'm not sure that's even close to being correct, but for sake of, for example, for this problem, that's how we'll do it. So your goal is then to determine the percentage of people that we collected that would actually meet that poverty, okay? So if I collected 10 people from Boone County, um, if I collected 10 people from Boone County in Kentucky, and three of them, met, you know, came in that met one of these criteria, 30% of them then would be considered in poverty. Does that make sense? All right. I don't think it's too hard to figure that out. Once again, there's some, some repetition here in developing these outputs. Don't make it hard. All right, instructions. Create a well-designed modular program based on the design techniques taught. Okay, once again, utilize my solutions, okay? I know everybody's learned this a lot of different ways, but for the most part, if you follow my solutions that I've had provided you so far in this course, you know you're doing it correctly, okay, and how I go about doing it. Uh, good naming conventions, make sure you name everything correctly. Make sure you name all your, uh, your, your uh, controls correctly using Hungarian notation along with uh, your arrays and your variables and so on. All right, I get really 
fussy on things like that. Give me good names on your functions and procedures. Don't abbreviate. Don't, you know, don't spell things out. Make it make it clear, okay? It only takes you a couple seconds to do it, but it makes it much more readable. I have the coding standards sitting out there for you under content. If you need to go read those to ensure that you're doing it right, go do so, okay? All survey information must be saved to parallel arrays. You should have four of them, one for county, state, income, and household, because you don't want to be separating those. Yes, you and I have to collect the county and the state and separate that into the two different arrays. You should know how to do that now, based upon your string manipulation, um, uh, the, uh, cl uh, well, string manipulation content that we went through, okay? Data should be continually collected throughout the day. Obviously, if we end the program, it's gone because it's an array. We're not storing this in any database, so it's temporarily stored in an array. But I should be able to add to it over and over again, and we need to be able to resize the arrays. So I should be able to have an array. My array can grow exponentially, but you're going to make it dynamic, correct? Because you know how to do that now. Does that make sense? All right, so kind of follow those pieces there. Uh, the rubric for this, I actually don't have one sitting here, but I can tell you, uh, you know, right off the bat, I'm going to be looking for, um, uh, I'm going to be looking for if you're meeting the requirements, I'm going to be looking for uh, if you designed it modularly correct, if you used the parallel arrays correctly, uh, and, you know, and looked at your logic all the way through and make sure it works, all right? Once again, take it step by step. If you get stuck on something, uh, go to the easy stuff. Get this one done first, the total household survey. That should be actually pretty easy uh, in, in some regards. And then go to this one, and then go to this one. All right? Take it step by step as you go through it, and I think you'll be fine. Do the best you can with it. And once again, this is a test. A test is not, it's not supposed to be a negative thing. It's supposed to, uh, once again, see where you are in your learning. And so it will help me understand where you are. And if you are in some issues and you still have some issues, you and I can talk. All right. Good luck with it. Do your own work.